So what made you want to study or be a nutrition major? Uh, well, I actually started off as a biology major and then switched nutrition after I gained some interest in um, just like eating disorders and healthy relationships with food and developing like a healthy lifestyle based on everything that is covered in the nutrition major. Also, it's a really easy uh, major to get into med school with. Okay, so your goal seems to be getting into med school in the future. So where did the desire to become or go into med school come from? Was it something from your childhood or something influenced by your parents or this has just been your dream forever? Well, I, okay, I think it was a mix of my parents and it being a dream forever because I have brown parents and so it's either doctor, lawyer, engineer. Um, but then also I had a doctor set when I was four and I never let go of it. So... There's that. And then I guess throughout like my experiences and stuff that I've had, it's just made me become more of uh, like a compassionate person. So yeah, I was, medicine is just super interesting to me now. So you said there is one, there are a few experiences that made you interested in medicine. Can you tell us about one of those experiences? Um, yeah, so actually it's an experience that's kind of, stretched over a period of years so I guess ever since I can remember like I've had like issues with body image and just like comparing myself to other people and I think growing up in a I guess foreign parent type household you're constantly compared to other people and yeah that just kind of became the norm for me and I always just felt like I was never good enough in terms of body image in academics and anything like that and that significantly affected my mental health and I ignored it for a very long time up until I realized that I wasn't alone and I guess the help and the support that I got from my friends and other people that I talked to really inspired me to want to help other people in the same way. So you talked about the concept of self-image so how has your view changed over time on that topic? Um, so I guess when I was younger, it was always a vicious cycle of comparing myself to whether it be like my friends or my sisters, um, just with everything. I always felt like if I was doing good, I should be doing better. And there was just, it was never ending. And I realized that a lot of it had to do with the way that social media reflects um, just perfectionism like it's always telling you be look a certain way eat so eat a certain way have a certain amount of friends do certain things with your life and the truth is that there's no such thing as a perfect life or a perfect person and as soon as I learned to accept that my views changed immediately and just how I saw myself changed immediately because I realized that it wasn't about achieving perfection it was about achieving happiness and following my passions and just being my own person without being influenced by what other people were doing or how other people looked or yeah, just anything like that. So, so do you use any, what things do you use when you start to realize, Oh, look, I'm comparing myself to someone else. Is there something you use to like catch yourself off guard? I mean, I think, well, now I'm just a lot better in general at realizing first of all, that I'm comparing myself to other people. And I just remind myself that, So something that I do is I just remind myself that, first of all, every single person is different and comparing yourself to someone will do absolutely nothing for you, will do nothing productive for you. So instead I, it's like a switch that I flip off and I just devote my time and my effort and I guess my emotions to something more productive, like something that makes me happy. Like, I don't know, um, like I'm really into arts, so just like playing ukulele or like finding new music on Spotify, just things like that, things that make me happy. Okay, that, that's pretty interesting to know. So on that, what how do you how do you think about the topic of learning new things? Um, so in terms of learning, I think one thing that's made me a lot more appreciative is just recognizing privilege because there's so many kids like young kids who would give anything first of all to be even enrolled in a school 
let alone be able to afford an instrument to learn how to play or just like be able to have enough like have enough ingredients to I guess develop a hobby in cooking like it's things like that they're so small and you don't realize that everything is a privilege and yeah so especially learning um I definitely appreciate it more knowing that there are so many people that will never be able to have what I what I sometimes have to complain over Mm, that, that's a pretty interesting point you have there. So one question I had is, what is one thing that you would tell your, I said, let's say like your high school self or let's do your high school self and your college starting, like a freshman in college? Dude, chill. <laughs> Literally just chill. I feel like I was always like on steroids. Like I was just trying to like, get everything done. I never stopped and like took the time to just, I guess, do something that I enjoyed, find what I enjoyed. I, it was always school and getting to the end goal for me until honestly this year, I actually just like applied for a mental health organization, which I guess I realized my passion for later on because of like experience and stuff. But yeah, I just never slowed down. Yeah, that, that's something similar to what I also experienced. When I came, I moved from Oklahoma in the ninth grade, or starting in ninth grade, and I knew no one in Texas, and also had a Bobby accent. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I got to school, it was just like, I, I didn't know anyone, and all these people were just like meeting their friends after summer, so, so I, was, I just felt super alone. But somehow it was super easy for me to adapt to different schools, because I've done that in India also. So through that, I found new friends, super fast and I know some people like they never find friends and it's hard for them to do but what I realized I would do things whatever the crowd wanted instead of just doing what I wanted to do and so for a long time I would just oh my friends want to do this so I would do that my friends want to do this so I would do something else and it's not because I also wanted to do that that is why I, I wouldn't do it so I realized going to college like I never I never used to dance before but in college, I just decided to try out for the dance team. And I, 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 like, I was scared of dancing. I would never dance anywhere. Yeah. So that's, that's when I decided, okay, I'm not going to let the world take me wherever it wants, but make my own choice to go where I want to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the next question, which is, what is one thing that you would want to have on a billboard shown everywhere in the world? Just like a reminder that to the world, this is something that, yeah, you would want to look at each day if you go just once to see it. So I think what I would do is have a billboard with a very colorful smiley face so that attracts everyone's attention and it would just say be happy. So what exactly do you mean by be happy? Because happiness can be a different definition to different people. And you know, there's like books saying like, oh, you, the way to be happy is do this or the way to be happy is do something else. But I think for me personally, happiness is a subjective mm -hmm. definition more than an objective. So to me, happiness is, it's about feeling successful without, I guess, the influence or the opinions of other people. You have no one telling you, oh, you're, 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 you're happy, like you're doing good. You feel good about yourself despite what other people are saying or how other people feel about your life. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So let me ask you. If you were not allowed to be a doctor, what is something else that you would want to do? Okay, well, I have a couple of things. Yeah, tell them all. So the first one, I'm super into designing, like decorating, all that sort of stuff. So I definitely would be an interior designer, but also that's not practical, as they say. So I... Before, before you go further, I want to ask, why do you think... It is not practical. Practical, and do you think it would change in the future generations? Uh, okay, well, I think it, it's just impractical considering that very few people become extremely successful off of being an interior designer. Um, I mean, props to the people who do. Uh, I don't know if you watch, what is it called? I'm blanking. It's that one show with the five guys. <laughs> I don't know, but, but they... I, I watch a real estate show with my family called, what is it, the Drew Brothers? No. Drew. Something, pro Property Brothers, or something like that. 
but they do they do more real estate and they also show some interior designing but it's more based on real estate oh. and that's like something i'm interested in but i haven't looked at much and that would be something cool i would want to do in the future because having real estate income is just you can sleep in like your house is making money for you or like your True. rental property is just making money for you while you sleep yeah yeah but go on to your interests oh yeah um yeah, so interior designing, but if not, then I would definitely be a chef just because I like cooking. I like going on Pinterest and finding new recipes and trying them out and possibly failing, <laughs> sometimes making them good. And then I think my favorite thing is whenever I can serve people my food. So maybe I'd open a restaurant. So what is it about the aspect of <laughs> serving people the food? Let's say it's to your friends or it's like, mm-hmm. let's say you invited someone over what is it in the aspect of serving the food that for you personally gives you the feeling of like fulfilling fulfillment? Right. Well, I mean, it's only fulfilling if they like it. If they hate it, then I cry, but <laughs> if it's good, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's going to be good. <laughs> if it's good food, then yeah, they just look so happy and proud of me. And that makes me proud of me. And yeah, it's, it's nice to see other people, I guess, indulging in something that you enjoy as well, because you enjoy making the food and seeing them smile and they enjoy eating it. And then they tell you that you should do it again and make more and you're like, yeah, sure. Um, And what else? I think the other thing I would be is kind of related to medicine still, um, is a therapist, a talk therapist, just because I love listening to people and I love hearing other people's stories, finding out um, just who people are as individuals. I think one of the, my biggest pet peeves is when people try to make small talk because it's super meaningless to me. And, um, I guess it's just a waste of time. Like I'd rather ask you what your deepest fear is than ask you what you feel about the weather. So going back on the small talk thing, yeah. why, why do you think it's meaningless? Because Okay, in the when I studied in Germany, I know in the German culture, the Germans have like no, they don't do any small talk at all. They're just, they're just gonna they're never gonna ask you, oh, how is your day going? They're just gonna ask you, we have to do this or this is where we need to go. They have a specific task or a project, whatever you want to call it, and they'll only talk about that. They don't do the small talks we do in elevators or just walking down the street to see someone. And sometimes it's nice because you don't have to deal with the random other conversation that takes up this time which you could have used for something else. But sometimes what I feel is it's also nice because not everyone can just tell you their deepest secret or the deepest or the main thing you want to talk about. They like, they're just accustomed to being asked, someone just asking and taking an interest in their day, asking, oh, how did your day go? Right. Something happened. Because let's say I have some friends I can easily tell and if I'm, if I'm feeling bad or sad, I can talk to them easily about it. And for them, I don't have to do small talk because well, they know they just, they just expect me to like reply whenever I want to answer and they'll be patient about it. But for new people or people you're just meeting, do you think we should do small talks, small talk, not at all, a little bit, or just do a lot of small talk? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Well, I definitely think it's like, okay, so it's like a necessary part of like daily routine. Like if you're just kind of running into someone it's like it's polite it, it, to say like oh, how are you doing but in terms of actually getting to know someone I do think it is kind of like meaningless unless it's like the start to like a a more in like deeper conversation if that makes sense so so let's go back to this first time I met you I made yeah. small talk so did you think that was would you would well, rather no, wanted because- just say just saying hi and then not going into any further conversation or are you more used to oh this is a new person i don't know so there's going to be some small talk and i'm expecting the small talk to come well okay well i was like first of all i was a very different person when i first met you so i think small i was okay with small talk and also i mean i think that if you're meeting someone without the intent of really like getting to know them if you're just again like if it's just like normal like, hi, bye, sort of thing, then yeah, small talk's okay. Again, it's polite and it gives people the impression that you're a nice person. So, I mean, I guess now, yeah, like small talk is a little overrated because (laughs) I feel like, I mean, I know you pretty well, but yeah, I guess past a certain point of familiarity 
it's better to just talk about the deep stuff. So do you, do you have in your mind, like, what is the certain point or it's just a feeling that you just know like, oh, I know this person pretty well enough now, so I don't really have to make small talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like everyone has the people that they feel like they can talk to more and the ones that they can't. Um, okay. Well, I don't really think that there's much of a number so much as it is a feeling because yeah, like you have, you have those people that you can and can't talk to some people you meet and you, I guess just feel like it's harder to be vulnerable around them. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's a feeling. And I think it's just a mutual interest that someone gives off. Like, obviously like you're interested to know about them. You're interested to tell them about you. And then they also, I guess, give off the vibe that they're like interested in finding out more about you and willing to open up to you as well. But I am definitely like working on just being vulnerable altogether because what I've learned is that there are a lot of people who are just scared, like scared to just open up. So if you're vulnerable in the first place, if you're just very open about who you are, then, I mean, people may see that as an inspiration to, I guess, or they'll, they'll feel the feeling faster because you're making yourself so open to them. So I guess like sharing your own vulnerabilities mm -hmm. makes you want, makes you more approachable Definitely. to newer people. Yeah, for okay. sure. Because I mean, first of all, it makes you more relatable because I think it all goes back to the whole thing about like the perfect image or whatever. As soon as you talk about your vulnerability, well, your vulnerabilities, <laughs> you're, you're admitting that you're not perfect and you're inviting other people to admit to you that they're not perfect to like, that they're not perfect either. And, and most of the time, like once people realize that they'll be willing to talk about it with you. So like we've all been stuck at our homes for five or six months. And a lot of people are not able to go out with their friends or meet them. And it's hard for them just to connect with people. Like for me personally, if, if we, the people are, who are my friends don't live around me or near me, Eventually, I just like lose touch with them because I'm I'm bad at texting people who live yeah. far away, unless it's like somebody super important. But th that's also hard because there's so many things that come in the way just to reach out to them. So what? But in this this during this pandemic, I tried to make sure the people that live far away at least I reach out to them like biweekly or once a month just to make sure even if the conversation just like five minutes asking like oh how are you doing like what's been happening with you. Like we can catch up later if you're busy, but like, this is what's been going on with me. Like, right. like do you need anything? How can I help you? Just as much as like, just to getting, yeah. getting to know them if they're doing well and if they need like their friend, they know like they can call me or whoever they want to call someone right. anytime. And this relates to how just mental health is, is being affected and it's going to be affected once the pandemic ends, which is still going to be like the whole year pretty much. Mm -hmm. So what is your take on that? Well, I definitely think that the pandemic is, for the first time in, I guess, a long time, everyone's going through something. Everyone's at some point during quarantine has felt isolated or felt like they wanted to go out but couldn't or just felt lonely. And it's a very rare occurrence where everyone in the entire world is going through the same thing as you. For the first time, it's very obvious that you're not alone. So I think like, yes, it has definitely affected mental health in, I guess, a negative way in terms of increasing, I guess, the, the occurrence of it. But at the same time, it's made people a lot more aware of the fact that it's okay to like not be okay because I guess they're just realizing that, oh, like, I think a good example is like social media, like looking at, um, like posts and stuff like people will just be like talking about oh like I feel so sad today like oh they'll, they'll like make jokes out of it I feel like that's what our generation is like we make jokes out of out of being alone like oh I'm so depressed but even little things like that like you can relate to them in a way like that you might have not been able to before and I definitely think that a lot of people especially my friends have gone through this like peak, I guess, right before quarantine. And then they've all just plummeted and then come back up. I know I definitely have because there was a period in quarantine. I think it lasted like two weeks where I just did not want to talk to anyone because 
I guess I just was so not used to the idea or like, or I guess in general, hanging, like not hanging out with people that the second that I was forced into that, my body was like, all right, let's not try and fight this. So I almost like shut down. And then it, I, it was to the point where like my, my parents would be like, okay, let's just like, at least like in our car, just go grab some dinner together. And I was like, no, what's the point? Like it was so negative. And I, the other thing too, is that because of quarantine, I feel like people had a lot of time to themselves, which is actually what helped me get out of that rut because I realized like, okay, this is not helping me at all. It's not helping me to think that, that I'm the only one going through this, first of all. And it's not helping me to not try and make some light out of this, which is how I actually, that's, or not how, but like, that's why I, I forced myself to start reaching out to friends who actually had reached out to me before. And I just ignored them because I was like, and why talk to them if I can't see them? Um, And yeah, I just reminded myself that fortunately we're blessed with technology to where we can call, text, FaceTime, like it's some form of social interaction, even if it's not like physically face to face. I think quarantine has just made the whole, it's made me realize how, how significant even a little text saying, I'm here for you. Let's talk when you're free. How much it can mean to you. Like how it just reminds you that you're constantly supported by people. Yeah. So also in the starting, you know, the most common text is, uh, you ask, oh, so what are you up to? Yeah. But that makes you feel like, oh, I don't want to respond to this because I wasn't up to doing anything today. <laughs> yeah. So instead of that, I read an article which had four, like a hundred different ways on asking in a different way. Instead of asking, what are you up to? Asking, one of the most common ones, oh, what is, what's keeping you busy during these days? So that's, that's asking in a non, I guess you could say a judgmental way. So it's not, it's not, you're not comparing, oh, I did more than you and you did less. So you're like, I'm winning. There's, it's nothing like that. It's just asking, oh, what, what it's been on your mind for like, let's say the last week or a couple of two weeks, just to see like, this is what I'm currently doing. I'm interested in because like school's done. I don't know what else to do. Can't go out because this is the time like everyone would be going on different trips and then they have stories from there, but right now the stories are at your home. Yeah. So it's pretty hard to do. That was something that I found interesting, mm-hmm. which I'll put in the show description below. Okay, moving on to the next one. So all of this has made us realize that friendships are actually way more valuable than we think they are. So what is your take on the concept of friendship? Well, I can very easily say that I used to be a sort of a pushover when it came to friendships. It didn't matter how badly I was getting treated or how much I was disrespected by my friends. I would kind of just get through it until eventually the the friendships ended. And I actually like dealt with a friendship that I ended, um, I guess it was early April. So kind of beginning of quarantine and yeah, she had just done some things to me that I would, that just let me very unsettled. And I tried really, really hard to just say, okay, you know what? It's okay. We've had so many good times that this, these couple of bad times, they don't matter. It's fine. Like I can get past that. It's okay. And what I didn't realize is that first of all, if you have a friend who's doing something terrible to you repeatedly, it's, it's really not worth your time to just let them keep doing it. And I guess that's where I finally learned that friendship is a two way street. I can't keep giving respect and love and in my attention and my time and emotion to a friend who's not going to do the same for me so did you like find uh like like you know it's like three strikes then you're out or what did you what is there something that you found how you personally evaluate friendships well i think it's a lot about communication for me especially now like in quarantine so one thing that i've learned is if if they're not reaching out to you, if you see that, if you're noticing that it's very one-sided, that's just a sign that like, let them go. And if they really do value you, they'll come back and they'll apologize and, they, and they'll say, I'm sorry, which actually happened to like one of my friends because um, I guess we've been talking for a while, but then she was going through some stuff and I tried really, really hard to like keep reaching out to her. And eventually she just like stopped responding to me. And I kept asking her, let's hang out, let's at least FaceTime, whatever. And 
she did it up until I stopped responding. I like, I stepped back, which is something that I probably never would have done before. And once I did, sure enough, like two or three days later, she, she texted me with a very big apology and told me like, I'm really sorry. Like I know that I've been a bad friend and yeah, like I think it's just about realizing that again, like, I mean, both people or I guess multiple people in a friendship have to be given equal amounts in for, it, for it to be considered healthy. And so what some people think, let's say like you did something big for a friend, but then they did, they're not used to doing it in the same way. Let's say you gave some kind of gesture, yeah. but they're not used to doing it the way you do it. Mm -hmm. Some people might get confused, like, oh, they didn't do something big enough for me, so I don't want to be their friend. Right. What, what is what is your take on the, I guess, the concept of that? Right. So that, I feel like that's more like a concept of, like, love language, basically. Because I have this one friend who, her love language is buying gifts. Like, she bought me a $160 Apple TV sitting right there for my birthday. And for her, I made her a painting. And, like, we both equally appreciated like what we got because I knew because I first of all I don't think I would have accepted a $160 gift from anyone else but she literally was like you have to because this is how I show my love she was like I'm not artistic I can't do anything like that for you but what I can do is spend my money on you that I worked hard for I worked hard for the money and I want to spend it on you that's how I show my love whereas for me I guess my love language is I guess like more on the creative side or yeah I guess yeah so I'll just try and show that I paid attention. So I'll find, I think, what did it do for her? Oh, she had like this one photo of her and her boyfriend that she really liked and she'd showed it to me maybe like once or twice. Um, so then I actually contacted her boyfriend and got her boyfriend to send me the picture and then I turned it into like a little artsy piece and then got it printed on a poster and then I gave it to her and she loved it. And yeah, so I think it's about like understanding the love language of your friends so that it, at the end of the day, like you're not really well, yeah, like, you you are measuring up, like, what they're doing versus what you're doing, but you're taking into account their love language because people give in different ways. So, I mean, you can, you can just say, like, I, even if it might seem like, oh, one person did more, but as long as you understand how they like to be communicated, which right. comes with, like, communication is, like, the main source of every problem, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, if, if the, you and the other party understand, okay, this is how we communicate with each other, and we don't have a problem with it, yeah. then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, because exactly. it's, it's, like, your connection to them, so, like, they can just go do whatever they want, like, their opinion is not valid in that point. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you think about what works in relationships and what doesn't work? Okay, this is an interesting one because first of all, I've never been in a relationship, but I mean, 20 years of watching other people around you be in relationships, most of which are really toxic, kind of learn a lot about what to avoid versus like also like what to look for. So again, we already said this, but in, in, I think in every relationship communication is key if if something's wrong you got to tell them if something's going right tell them so they'll keep doing it and then i think it also goes into like trust like trusting that someone will just do what they say they're gonna do um i had this one friend who i mean we're gonna say that it's her ex-boyfriend it's her ex-boyfriend um who constantly would tell her, oh, I'm going to be home by this time so we can have our date night, like whatever. Um, and then he would just not come home and she'd have dinner ready and she'd have like a cute little like note written out for him, just things like that. And he wouldn't come home until maybe like four in the morning when he said he'd be home by midnight. And it's not that I ever, it's not that he was like messing around, like cheating on her or anything. He just like didn't keep his word. And First of all, I think that, yeah, like, first of all, that affects her trust in him, but also it's just a matter of respect. Like, if if you mutually respect someone in your relationship, then everything will go well, because immediately if you respect someone, then you're going to be able to trust them, because, I mean, and then also if you respect someone, you're going to be able to understand that they, or you're going to be able to assume that they can communicate with you, which means that you're going to want to communicate with them. Um, so I guess it's like, it's coming down to communication 
as the main source always. of all the problems, which always. I've always found that's always, always I learned that the hard way. No, I did too, in like personally, uh, yeah. whenever there's some hard conversation for like, let's say like till junior year of college, if there was a hard conversation, I'd make something up or at least some kind of realistic, believable excuse that would get me out of that situation for some amount of time longer so then I can deal with it. Yeah. But then when I dealt with it, the problem was worse than it could have been. Yeah. So now I, I just had, because I would think, oh, what, what are they going to think about me? Oh, I'm doing something else right now. I don't want to be yeah. being too lazy. But then I realized, even if you're busy, you can just say, okay, I want to tell you this is what we were talking about is important, but I'm busy with something else right now that will be done soon and then I can get back to you. Right. And if you can, you do it right, right away, then that's also important. While it might be hard to like talk about the topic, but the faster you do it, the less problem might, you might have. But what happens is we don't like to be sad, like humans. Yep. We don't like to be sad or we don't like to talk about things that are not easy to do. So we just say, oh yeah, sure, I can do this. And I can do all of this. But then when the time comes, we disappoint people, which then leads to doing more of the same, which becomes a cycle. And then you get stuck in that cycle. And sometimes the people never actually get out of the cycle. Yeah. But I'm happy I was able to learn to get out of that. Yes. I think it's it's so sad when I I see that people are more I mean this is something that I went through too like people would rather go through like the pain of like a failing relationship or a failing friendship than deal with the discomfort of just communicating because a lot of the time if you confront someone it's going to be uncomfortable that's why it's called confrontation like it's not just a regular like hey what's up like you're you're confronting someone because there's a problem or there's like an issue or just something that needs to be talked about that you probably don't want to talk about and they probably don't want to either. But almost every single time something good comes out of it. And maybe that maybe that one good thing doesn't seem good. Like maybe that good thing is the friendship ending, which in itself sounds bad. But in the long run, it allows you to move on, find better friends, invest in those better friends, things like that. So, same thing. Oh, was that, go ahead. I mean, finish. I was just going to like, say the same thing in relationships. Like, if it's not working out, um, yeah, a breakup sounds bad, like, has a negative connotation for the most part, but then you move on and you know exactly what not to look for. I mean, what to look for and what to avoid. It just refines your taste, I guess you can exactly. say. Exactly, yeah. For the future. Is this something you do or what is something how you think about this? I mean, you, if you haven't thought about this that much, what is something you would want to know more? Well, I mean, first of all, I never, I never heard of that, but it actually makes so much sense because the more times you ask yourself why, the further you're pushing yourself into thinking about the future, because you can only say why, like you can only have a reason that is, I guess, so close to the present before you literally are forced to start thinking further and further into the future, which is cool. I didn't really think about it like that, but I think also I've just, for the most part, been a very, well, Actually, no, I was, I think I used to be more of like a short-term thinker. And then honestly, like this past summer happened and I was like, again, like it tied into like the whole like happiness thing, finding my passion, things like that. And I started realizing that in the long run, like this, this friendship that like the way it ended isn't going to matter. Like it's, we both move on with our lives. And I started thinking more like long-term, like, okay, who are people that I can put my trust in that I know will be there with me till the end that will actually put like, impact my life like your circle of trust you could say exactly yeah um but yeah i i've never like i don't think i've ever actively thought about thinking into the future which is cool i actually might start doing that because i tend to be a very decisive person so that would probably help no that happens a lot especially like for college students right or i think this might be like anywhere in the world yeah the biggest problem is when you decide what you want to eat it's the biggest conflict. Yeah. Like, people just, we just can't decide and it goes yeah, on for so long. It just Ooh. takes so much time. Oh my God, still have that problem now. Maybe we'll figure it out. Okay, moving on to, well, in the summer, a lot of people tried working out at home and doing Chloe Ting and other Chloe workouts. Ting. I tried yes. it personally for two months and I think it works. It's pretty okay. fun. Okay. I made my parents do it too. So they're like, interested in working out too. It. Yeah, so... But on the nutrition side, there wasn't like, I didn't, I wasn't personally that much interest or invested in it. I've learned some about it, but not, you're more interested in nutrition. 
So what are some tips if you have that you would want to share? Well, first of all, it matters what your target is. If you're trying to lose weight, first of all, a common misconception is that eating less will make you lose weight. When really what happens is the less you eat, the your metabolism drops because your body gets used to the fact that you're not eating a lot. And yes, yeah, so your metabolism drops so that when you finally stop deciding, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to restrict what I eat and then go back to eating normally, you actually will gain back more weight most of the time because your body's now like, oh, well now I'm used to say you eating around 900 calories a day and now you're back to eating 1500. So it's like, oh, what is this? So then it'll just start storing this fat. Cool little nutrition fact there. So I think the better way to, I guess if you're trying to weight loss, get, get that quarantine bot or whatever <laughs> people or after it's about like a good combination of diet and, and exercise which again, a lot of people are really lazy, which is why people kind of look towards dieting. And in that case, it's about watching your macros, like making sure that you're getting enough carbs, proteins, fats, um, vitamins. vitamins, yes, vitamins, minerals, all of that, getting all of that in while I guess aiming for a calorie deficit. But honestly, like I'm not really the biggest fan of diet culture at all, just because I know how it can very easily turn from trying to eat healthy to like your main focus being eating healthy to very quickly becoming eating less. And that's like something that I had to deal with for literally like three years. And honestly, I still deal with it sometimes. I have to like remind myself, no, I got to eat. Like I'm literally like my body is living for me. Like I have to support it. Um, but yeah. And I also feel like people who are trying to like, I guess lose weight, um, will focus a lot on cardio, which actually a really good way to lose weight while gaining muscle is actually to just lift, which I feel like a lot of people don't know. Like they think that, oh yeah, it's just, I'll just go run like five miles a day and it'll be fine. But I mean, yeah, which is, that's okay. But I guess if you're trying to like look healthier versus like, if you're trying to be fit, like versus just looking like skinnier than try weightlifting. So, so why, why did you like read about this or where did you learn um, what lifting does for you? That's something that I learned on my own. All of like the nutrition advice was stuff I learned from class. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of like interested to see like what the difference was and like what, I guess everyone's trying to find that shortcut. So I'm guilty of Googling like what's, <laughs> what's the fastest way. <laughs> How to lose 10 pounds in two weeks. Oh yeah, dude, that's all my searches are like, yeah, but I, I mean, yeah, like the fastest way. And I think probably the most enjoyable, the most enjoyable way for a lot of people, because I know a lot of people don't like running. So a lot of people will be like, oh, what's the fastest way to lose weight without cardio? And actually in the long term, like lifting is a way to lose weight without cardio and actually end up looking more fit. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I Googled exactly on how that works and it's because when you lift weight, your body, okay, your body's designed to need at least minimum or minimum 30 minutes of exercise per day, doing whatever, walking, right. running, jumping, sleeping, swimming, skating, skating, sweeping the floor, cleaning your apartment. That's walking, also exercise. Standing. St standing. Yeah. Sometimes standing. That didn't work, but it, it uh, pumps the blood in your vessels and goes around all of your body, which releases the endorphins which make your metabolism run and helps like clear your pores. Those, the, what do you set out, sweat out is like all the toxins that we put in our body, right. which half of them you can't even see. Half of them could be in the food. You don't even know because yeah. like, oh, it tastes so yummy. It's, but then you're like, oh, it's fast food. Mm -hmm. But it, because our body's just designed to, like they figured out how, why humans like what food and what tastes good. So they'll put that even though it's not helpful just so the companies can make profit. Right. But just by doing that for it, minimum 30 minutes per day, your skin would be better. Your, your skin looks younger. That's why people who you see who work out a lot, not crazy. Like you're working out the only thing you don't have any time for anything else. If you work out just good enough to keep your body healthy when you're 50, you're going to look like you're like 35 and who doesn't want to keep looking younger forever. Like everyone's still trying to find how to live forever. Mm -hmm. Why not just do a little bit each day you can for just to make your body feel younger. And they did a study in psychology, I don't know the exact name, but where they put these 80 year old men 
in their in their environment when they were about in their twenties, mm-hmm. and they like blocked it up. The whole place looked like whenever wherever they lived in America in the twenties. So all the all the newspaper, whatever games they had, everything was just looking like in their times when they were in their prime, you can say. Yeah. And they found after two weeks, these men, whatever conditions they had, they just went away, and they just felt better. They they lost like any excessive weight they had, or they just their health just increased about like sixty percent from what would have been if they just stayed in their environment when they were like sitting in the couch all day just mm-hmm. watching TV, nothing else to do. Right. So it's like. Just by putting yourself in an environment where you help your body, then your body's gonna eventually like help you because this is the only body you're not gonna get unless like Elon Musk decides to make like a robotic body and you can just insert your brain into something. Exactly. But until then, do at least 30 minutes a day and over time it'll help you. And it doesn't matter what someone might look like, oh look, they're like they're so healthy, I can never be them. But you don't know like the years it took them before. You only found out about yeah. them at their peak, but like maybe in the future, there's somebody's gonna find out about you. But the best way to start is yesterday, and the second time, second best time to start is today. Mm-hmm. So it's just taking the small steps. Small steps will help you in the future. Yeah, I just wanted to go back. You know how you said like you don't know like just because they look healthy, like you don't know how long they took. I think that goes back or not goes back, but it kind of brings up the whole idea of not assuming people are living a certain lifestyle just based on what you see is again, in terms of like social media, because a lot of like fitness gurus will be like posting like their healthy diets, like what they're eating like today, like that, or like their favorite meal of the day. And you think that, Oh, like, Oh, they're eating so healthy. Oh, they're like taking such good care of them. So like, this is great. And like, yeah, like for the most part, a lot of them are, but then there also are the ones who are doing like that false, false, false advertising. advertising. Um, and yeah, like I think I actually had a food page on Instagram and I was kind of guilty of this because I would post food that was super healthy and looked really good. And people would have this preconceived notion that I was like a chef and like I took super good care of myself and like ate really well when really what was happening is that one meal that I posted like for that day was actually the only meal I ate that day and I was talking to my friend one time um and she was like oh yeah like I think like the one thing that really like inspired me um about you is just how your amazing relationship with food and I just looked at her and I started laughing and I was like oh honey like you don't even know (laughs) you don't even know and then I told her like the, like what was really happening and she was like oh my gosh because I guess I was just stuck in like a very like restrictive slash I don't know it was just not a good period in terms of like my relationship with food and no one knew that like anyone who followed me was like oh you're such a good chef oh this looks so good you got to come over and cook for us sometime like you probably eat so well and in reality like I mean yeah I guess the meal was healthy but I wasn't healthy. So you can't just go assuming that people are healthy just because that's what they portray. Just like you can't tell the whole movie from one scene. Very true. Exactly. Okay, so moving on to... I have some questions to ask you. And, well, this is one of the few questions. What's something that people misunderstand about you that I've noticed in your time of existence? Well, I mean, I guess I mentioned one already. I guess, like, my relationship with food. But also, um, I think around, like, March, was it March? I don't remember. But I posted a video on my Instagram page to all my almost 1,100 followers that just basically explained my story with, um, like, eating disorders and mental health and stuff like that. So I feel like a misunderstanding that people might have had about me is that I was really healthy when in reality I was struggling just as much as the next person. Um, and I think another thing is that like people think that I may not be easy to talk to or I might just not be friendly, which I guess, oh, I would hope for the most part that people don't think that very much of me anymore just because like I've worked so hard on on becoming more open and more vulnerable so that people again like would see me as someone that they could come and talk to um but yeah i don't think anything else too crazy (laughs) so what is like what is like some kind of 
we could say actionable tip that you would want to tell people because not a lot of people like for you to make a video is like putting yourself out there and a lot not a lot of people still do that mm -hmm. because they think oh what is somebody else gonna think of me but but like the goal is like it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks if you like it if it's for you because it's your page you just post it yeah and if people don't like it well well I guess it sucks for them yeah. you're, you're missing out on like something important and useful for them that could have been if they just paid some attention right so what is some what is like a I guess some tips or one tip you want to give to somebody who might be struggling out there. Um, well, I mean, this one's cliche, but you're not alone. I think that's like one thing that people, I think that's like the driving cause of why people are so silent. It's because they feel like if they talk about it, no one's going to understand when really it's not until you talk about it that you realize that there are people who have literally gone through the exact same thing as you or something very similar or will empathize and be able to put themselves in your shoes and help you through that. So I would just say if you ever feel like it's too much for you to handle, well, honestly, like it, you shouldn't even let it get to the point where it's too much for you to handle. As soon as like you feel like something's off, or even if you're having a good day, like you should just honestly seek vulnerability because it can be something positive in your life, something negative. Either way, like seeking, um, I guess, attention and um, support from other people by just being open. I don't think it'll ever get you anything bad as long as you're doing it genuinely. As long as you're like, not making up like lies about yourself just, just to, to get, get attention. attention. Right, yeah. So moving on to the next question is, what is some tip or some habit that you personally use on like a weekly basis or are you trying to build more? on to improve your like own list? I actually have been journaling every day, which is actually something I got from my roommate. She's the queen of journaling. Whenever she's just doing down, she'll just write it all out. And especially now when it's a lot harder to like be around people, you kind of just need another outlet. And I very quickly realized that letting all of my thoughts just build up in my head, like that's what happens, they build up and then they just turn into a breakdown, which is not fun. So. I just found a different outlet, which was journaling, and it honestly just really helped me. And I actually do the, you know how you were saying like you kind of just write like three positive yeah. things about your day. I I do that. I just write like one thing. Okay. But I think over time it's helped me realize that like just doing that, it kind of just makes you stop and think and like focus on something else that makes you happy besides like. I mean, I guess focus focusing on something that you have versus what you don't have. So it's like finding happiness within right. your stuff that already is there than like going yes. out there to get it. Yes. And so how long have you been journaling? Like a month or how long has it been? Or um, just super new? Yeah, it's honestly really new. I started when I got to College Station after, um, after college, like right when school started. So and then do you do this in the morning or in the evening or just pretty much whenever you're feeling? I, I do it in the morning just because I want to like start off my day well, no matter how bad it might end up being like during the rest of the day, like at least I started it off well. Yeah, and that's something also I do, yeah. which I don't know our mutual friend does, <laughs> yes. but I do this in the app called Notion, mm -hmm. which we're going to be a whole episode about that app in a later episode. But in that, where I just do is each day I have, I just made a template for myself. It just says like, good morning, have a good day. Doesn't matter. It might be like corny, but why not? I like it. So I keep yeah. it for myself. I just put, I just do five minutes. You can use a timer or you can do as long as you want. I just do, uh, like whatever I'm thinking from the night before, mm -hmm. I'll just put it. And it doesn't even have to be like complete sentences. Right. Like it's, if you read that English, it's just going to be like, what the heck are you writing? But it's fine. It just helps get whatever out, some, out is on my mind on paper mm -hmm. or app page. Just to be there so you can see like, oh, I was thinking about these five things that are technically connected. So mm -hmm. like, why not? I could just plan out my day from that. Right. And it just makes you feel less, like your mind just feels more relaxed. Yeah. I have this one friend where she like doesn't even get satisfaction from, from journaling. So it's kind of, it sounds kind of weird, but I mean, I guess it works. But she'll like go in her closet and just like talk to herself. Like she'll just talk it out. So it, even if there's no one there, at least she's like getting it out. It's, which is honestly like a form of journaling, I guess, because you're just getting out the words in a different way. Yeah, that's like 
Another way to do that is also using meditation. Mm. And then most common for like students, which are free, are like Headspace and Calm. Calm. I love Calm. I haven't tried Calm, but I've used Headspace for like the last starting of this year and like on like 200 day or something like that streak. Yeah. Uh, before I had the app for like years and I was just like, who does, like, who does meditation? I was like, what is this? Like, yeah. no. And then I took that course, which I was talking about the Yield Science of Well-Being course. And then I was like, okay, 30 days, I'll try one habit to do. So now I do that. But, and now when I don't do it each day, it's like, oh my God, there's so much going on in my mind. I need like, just five minutes of relaxation. Mm -hmm. Just sit outside or wherever, just no sound. You can have a fan on because I like having the fan on. Yeah. Just doing five minutes a day, you just feel like, whoa, like brain reset time yeah. to like go hit the day. Or like even before you're sleeping, that can help out too. Yeah, I tend to be one of those people where right before I'm about to go to sleep, my mind just bombards me with every every stressful thought possible. So I recommend confident sleep stories because they will knock you out. I know I don't think I've ever gotten through a full one without the like, guy. Yeah, I don't even know the endings of half of the stories that that they have on there because I just talked out. Yeah and so even if you start you might fall asleep and that's yeah. okay because I fell asleep like for like months before I was like, okay, fine. I need to do this in the morning <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to make sure I don't fall asleep. Exactly. But it just helps out your day so much. It's just like you work so hard that your brain's like, it's like you're a car you're pushing it to like the max speed limit, but after some time it's going to overheat. Right. So you have to like cool down to, to cool down, just take like five minutes and you can build up. You can go five, 10, 15, 20. Like some people meditate for like two hours a day. And of course like we don't have time for that. Yeah. So you can do five minutes or 10 minutes and build it up and you'll realize it might not be for like the first three months, but you'll just realize just having those five minutes or 10 minutes per day doing nothing is actually doing a lot oh, for what? you. Yeah. People are just always on the go and they just never, you don't realize that just like taking that five minutes for yourself or even just like taking that one minute to like write down what's going on in a journal or talk it out or whatever. It really does a lot. Okay, so going to the question of, well, if you could remove all the barriers and constraints, which is just pretty much saying, if money wasn't a problem, then what would you want to do in life? And just in general, like, what is your, what is your thinking right now? Of course, it could change in the future. Well, I think, like, one of the biggest things that I look for now is making sure that people, like, don't feel alone or judged. So I think, I feel like, it would take a lot to accomplish this, but I would want to like go out, I guess, to a community and make sure that whoever I invite to this event would, first of all, not know each other. So everyone is a stranger to everyone. And this event would just basically be a really big party full of like warm, open arms. So the goal would be for you to come to the party and be a complete stranger to everyone. Basically you'd be a blank slate and then you could just write your own story for these people and you could be as honest and as vulnerable and as real as you want to be without the fear of them judging you and carrying that judgment as you like get to know them like or having or like the possibility of them judging you could like see them again so you could literally talk to all of these strangers and them super well for this one day or evening or i don't really know how long it would go probably a day days a good amount um but you get to know these people as as just strangers and I guess just be your complete self around them. No, that, that sounds like an amazing idea because a lot of people are also just afraid of talking to new people. Mm -hmm. So it'll automatically force you to talk, right. which will help you because you shouldn't be afraid on what other people think of you as long as you think of you on the inside as, okay, what I'm doing, I like. Mm -hmm. And if somebody doesn't like, well, too bad for them. They can go away. It doesn't matter. Like they're losing out on cool information I could possibly give. And maybe I could have learned something from them. But if not them, there will be someone else who can probably teach me in the end. And on the last question is what makes you inspired to be the best self? The best version of myself? Yes. Um, honestly, as conceited as this sounds, I think that I inspire myself more than anyone else in my life just because first of all like, I know that I've been through stuff that's shaped me into someone that I never would have recognized like even a couple of months ago I think that I've gone through so much that it's made me such an like empathetic person 
And the struggles that I've been through have made me realize that there are so many people who, who are going through, if not the same thing, then very similar things or things of that nature. And yeah, like my own struggles have inspired me to just keep being better because I guess in the same way that I found refuge in other people who were like willing to listen to me, other people can find refuge in me. So it's like knowing from what you were before and like mm-hmm. what you can be yeah, and what you can, you can do to help others who might not know what to do mm-hmm. is like, that's something that's like pushes you all the time. Right. Exactly. For being on the podcast, we hope to hear from you in the future on more episodes. And if somebody wanted to reach out to you just to talk to you, get to know you more, they can reach out to you. What are your social links that you want to share? Um, so I normally just use Instagram, which is, um, at, I'll spell it out because I don't know if you my name, but it's N I S H I K A P E E R I S. It's just my first and last name. Or honestly, you can text me at 281-726-7945. Awesome. Okay. And we'll include show notes on all the topics we talked about in this episode And again, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Of course, this was fun. And thank you for your time. Any last comments you have? Um, No, this was fun. Hope you guys learned something.